In the history of conservation, there are many who've worked to preserve our common wealth, but one man's life and vision of conservation stands out among the rest. It never personally separated himself from his child. He saw himself as a personification of conservation of the state. He had that presence uh, when he walked in a room. He, he didn't have to uh, feign it, it was real. He had the vision to look ahead, to dream ahead and see where this Commonwealth was going to go. He was different. Maurice Goddard was different. When Governor George M. Leader took office in 1955, environmental issues were top priority. He was looking to revamp his cabinet positions with professionals who could rise to the environmental challenges the state was facing at the time. Fifty-two people report to the governor. Most all of those were in the cabinet. And I was determined to get professionals. Enter Maurice K. Goddard, an academic from Penn State University. As head of the forestry department, Goddard was actively involved in studying and managing the state's forest resources. He was a decorated veteran of World War II, whose proven leadership launched him onto the political scene as secretary of the Department of Forests and Waters in 1955. Goddard started strong, working with both sides of the political landscape, a nonpartisan trait he'd honed throughout his career. He proposed that all royalties from oil and gas extracted on state lands funnel back into the budget for the department providing enormous financial resources for the development and conservation of the state's natural resources. That was a very progressive idea, and I believe I saw somewhere that that was picked up from California. I think it was effective because it affected the lives of so many people. When you pour those additional resources into our flood control, our park systems, it, it changed the quality of life. Leaders signed the Oil and Gas Lease Fund Act, and with the money flowing in, Goddard would have all the purchasing power needed to launch his next notable vision. With a few circles drawn on a map, the idea of a state park within 25 miles of every Pennsylvanian was born. He had a vision for Pennsylvania that no one else has ever come up with, of providing wholesome recreation for uh, all the people within Pennsylvania. He felt that the average citizen needed a place to bring his family, to bring his family together, to be with his children, uh, that was away from the home. He said, this is a poor man's recreation. All he needs is a half a tank of gas to go out there and have a wonderful day in the, in, in, in the woods with the water, with the swimming and the boating and the fishing. Maurice Goddard said, a state park without a place to swim is like apple pie without the cheese. By the end of his 24-year career in 1979, which spanned the administrations of five governors and eventually called him to lead the Department of Environmental Resources, Goddard had added 45 state parks to the Commonwealth through the land acquisitions of Project 70 and development efforts of Project 500. But his vision went beyond parks and forests. Water-based initiatives were just as important. Goddard had helped to steer the state through three major floods, Hurricane Connie and Diane in 1955 and Agnes in 72. The devastation ingrained the need for managing the state's water resources. Trying to manage water uh, during periods of flood and protecting people against floods, difficult as it is, certainly uh, made Goddard realize uh, the complexity and the importance of dealing with the water issue. No question about that. He was integral to the formation of the Susquehanna and Delaware River Basin Commission, a groundbreaking compact of the surrounding states of New York, New Jersey, Delaware, and of course, Pennsylvania. I think Morris Goddard felt that water quality was absolutely essential not only industrial and municipal drinking water purposes, but he saw water as a key ingredient to good recreation. Uh, I doubt if there are many state parks that don't have water in some form. 
The list of his contributions to the state of Pennsylvania is long, and even though his name isn't well known, the hope is that the legacy of Maurice K. Goddard, 1912 to 1995, will be. I think all Pennsylvanians have been touched by the, the work of Maurice Goddard. He was a visionary leader that worked for many years on behalf of the citizens of the Commonwealth to protect our water quality, to ensure adequate access to outdoor recreation, to put a park within 25 miles of every citizen, to ensure safety through flood control and dam creation. So even if you're not a park user, you benefit through clean air, clean water. Because you learn now, you'll know it all the rest of your lives.